Riley sat down in her favourite spot atop the roller coaster of the old abandoned amusement park. It was here she felt safest, high away from the local vandals and drunken teenagers, who were more than an annoyance than anything else. Though there would occasionally be one really rotten seed amongst the rest of the bad ones. Tonight was a quiet one. The homeless stood tattered and worn, warming themselves around the, their rusty barrel fires while the junkies were hidden in the shops smoking and injecting themselves to escape the horrors of their everyday lives. Most of them were just good people with tragic stories that brought them to this point. Riley could respect and more so understood that the others in the park were hidden in the shadows. Rarely they would show themselves. Only the carpenter and the sage came out as they were her friends and did not fear her like the others. The noise of the drunken teenagers attracted her attention as they left. She didn't bother them. They appeared harmless. One of the girls ran back, held up a journal, and put it on the entrance booth counter before quickly running back to her friends. Riley smiled. She was tired and would get it later. Right now she climbed into a small makeshift wooden house the carpenter had built for her and lay down to sleep. The sun was rising over the treetops, brushing the sky with its cool morning colours. They would be back tonight. Riley was still small for a girl of fourteen, with chocolate coloured hair and haunting blue eyes that revealed she had seen far too much already in this life. She would barely smile, yet neither did she frown. When she looked at you, it was as if she was looking into you and could see all your secrets even those dark ones you hid from yourself. It could be quite unnerving, but when she looked away, you would be left feeling naked and exposed. This was even worse than her seeing into you. Had you bored her? Did she see something of who you are that was unsettling? The questions would come, but the answers would not. Her, her parents hated her, even as far to hate the journal she always wrote in. They beat her constantly, sending her to the hospital on many occasions and never seemed to be a true reason why. It only left you feeling like you had to save her, but there was never a way to do so. There were only two people who loved her. The first was her grandfather, whom she idolised. He could make her laugh and he would bring her journal, then tell her stories, fairy tales from the old country. He encouraged her writing, telling her true storytelling was a gift, one she should be careful with because it was very strong, so strong it could bend our very reality, a belief that could become a truth, and she believed him. The other person was a boy who went to school with her and lived down the street. She was at the age of crushes and wanted to have her first love. He did not seem to keep away from her either. He actually seemed to be watching her. She dreamt of him, his dark hair, blue eyes, and the way he held himself that had all the girls swooning. But still, she so very much wanted to be his. The worst day, or so she would believe, came on her 14th birthday. She awoke in a panic, no way to explain it. She just knew her grandfather was gone. She dressed and ran down the stairs to find family crying. It was true, and she was alone. After that, Riley immersed herself into her writing. She acknowledged very few people, even the boy. He noticed and felt hopeless to take away the pain. All he could do was wait for her. It was during this time she found her talent, her gift that her grandfather told her about. She realised she would write in her journal and she could make things happen, small things happen or know people better than she would find she wanted to. Riley's reclusiveness did not settle well with her mother, however, and one day in a fit of rage, she tore apart Riley's journal. 
Riley ran into her room locking herself in and wrote in a new journal feverishly that while cooking her, her mother's overly hair sprayed beehive hairdo caught fire and she burned to death. Riley bursting with a headache lays her head down and sleeps. She is awoken to the commotion of the sirens bustling noise below her. She races down to the kitchen to the site of first aiders, police and firemen as they surround the horrific sight of her mother's blistering, melting, bloody body. Riley could only stare, unsure what to think. Her father's accusing scream brings her back. You did this. The officers push him back on the chair, calming him as a fireman ushers Riley away. Her father was right though, Riley thought. It was her fault, and a small smirk crossed her face. Simon threw his backpack on and climbed quickly out of his bedroom window. Once upon the ground, he grabbed his bike and walked to the road away from the house where he met up with his friend, Luke. Both of them headed off to the abandoned amusement park, a rite of passage where seniors push the younger kids into it. This wasn't the case with Simon, though. He wanted to go for as long as he could remember. The ghost hotspot full of stories of the paranormal. There was even a famous ghost hunting team that had gone in only to be attacked, sent running out as white as the ghosts they were looking for. Supposedly they even had forgotten footage, but in the attack all their video had been destroyed. White static was all that was left. One of them had said that he saw her when they were attacked. It was as if everything was all at her command and its own entity. No one who ever went in ever left with footage. It was always just static. They arrived at the gates where the two seniors were waiting. The larger muscular dark haired boy was Wade, the all star quarterback and definitely the bully of the team. His partner Jesse was much smaller inside, blonde hair, and more of the pretty boy, class president. Simon and Luke set their bikes aside. You know the rules, stay until 3am, leave before and I get to beat the shit out of you. Wade smiled, hitting his fist to the palm of it over his head. They nodded and climbed over the gate. Simon pulled out his flashlight, anxious, nervous, excited, not quite sure which emotion to feel while Luke, on the other hand, looked pale and suddenly did not want to be there, but he wasn't going to leave his best friend here alone. Simon looked to the roller coaster, his whole purpose for doing this. Let's go, Luke sighed, and Simon started to walk over, and he followed. Simon was always the one in his family who would rather be wrapped up in his own projects than joining the social drama that happened outside his door. Besides, he saw things differently and felt there was something more important he should be doing, but he would be damn if he knew exactly what it was. He had this feeling ever since he was young and let it guide what he did. He may only be 16, but it was obvious when you looked into his blue eyes that contrasted with the pitch black hair that he was born out of this time as though he's been here before. An old soul, one would say. Next to his computer sat an album his mother had given him. That was his grandfather's whose name he was given. It was full of clippings about the abandoned amusement park to which he added his own when he found articles. The park had closed in 1958, the year after which he added his own when he found articles. The park had closed in 1958, the year after the accident. That wasn't an accident. It wasn't the reason the park had closed though. It was all the hauntings. People were terrified believing the park was cursed and no one would go any longer. For Simon, on the other hand, the park called 
to him as he passed every day on his way home from school and all you could see was the small wooden house on top of the roller coaster as it peeked out over the trees it was her little house some nights if it were clear enough he would climb up onto the roof of the house and he would be able to see see it in there in the distance he wondered if when he went into the park would he see her could she see him from her makeshift tower she wasn't an urban legend he knew it she was real the girl was killed there 50 years ago the girl he was drawn to the girl he was in love with it was Riley's 15th birthday and her father decided to take her to the amusement park even though she really wanted to be left alone however the day was not when she expected her father was being nice to her and she was actually enjoying herself for the first time in a while the last ride they had to go on was the new roller coaster they sat up front as it made its climb to the top and stopped a normal glitch in the new ride but her father took advantage of the opportunity to unfasten her belt before she could grasp her situation her father pushed her out of the car saying you don't deserve to live Riley hit the ground seconds later as a big burly man ran over along with the boy he was here she thought and gave a glimpse of a smile he was the last thing she would ever see alive as she exhaled her last breath cautiously Simon and Luke walked through the dark park which looked even more grim illuminated by flashlight the smell of barrel fires burning filled the air and added a dim light in the background letting off shadows that play tricks on their eyes this way Simon gestured for Luke to follow him towards the roller coaster but they were suddenly stopped by a huge giant of a man you shouldn't be here he spoke with a deep voice in matter-of-fact manner no Simon thought he'd been waiting entirely too long for this day it's true is she here Simon was surprised at his lack of fear yes the man was solemn and answered John for some reason Simon knew his name was John this was odd thought a ghost materialized in front of the boys and of the homeless man looking man fuck this Simon I'm out of here Luke ran off the way they had come from Simon John spoke his name quietly before looking at the apparition started to float down the cobblestone path follow the sage Simon gave a nod still having no fear of any of this and caught up with the ghost at the pond the sage pointed at the slimy green water until Simon understood he wanted him to touch it the water was disgusting but reluctantly he put his hand in the water see there's nothing to be afraid of brother there's no ghosts here it's all just a bunch of stories to scare you Simon who looked to be about five stood on the stone wall around the pond they come out at night not during the day he argued with his brother who gave him a light joking push on the shoulder which was enough to make him lose his balance and fall into the pond he was disorientated for a moment but long enough to become tangled in the years of debris at the bottom just as panic started to set in the girl appeared and entangled him Riley he knew her name she pushed him back to the surface as his brother grabbed him out of the water Riley reached down for the water Jesus Christ Simon mom's going to kill me now he put him down on the ground the girl didn't you see her there's no girl did you hit your head too he took his hand and then left abruptly not before Simon had a chance to look back and see Riley in her cuff jeans dark purple shirt and ponytail watching them leave she looked so sad Simon shook his head as he pulled his hand out of the water I was here he looked to the sage why didn't I remember before the sage only pointed to the tiny house atop the roller coaster John appeared from the shadows of the night I'm John the carpenter I knew some that somehow of course you did you're Simon you're the boy that loved her you were with me when she died no I wasn't that was before I was born 
and shouldn't you be like in your 70s? I'm a ghost, don't you remember that? But you were a ghost, but I look alive. That's her doing. She gave me physical form so that I can do things needed. How? How can she do that? With her journal. She can manipulate reality with it. He looked up to the house. You should go to her. She's waiting for you. And you'll understand. Simon nodded and went off to the roller coaster. His thoughts were racing as she reached the stairs along the first climb to her little house. He was nervous, but it wasn't from fear. It was more like nervous confusion. He wanted answers too. Reaching the top, he climbed out of onto the rails and got to the front. She was sitting on the ledge, her legs swinging off the edge. She moved her journal to the other side of her so he could sit beside her. After what felt like forever, but actually was only a minute, she looked at him and their eyes met. He melted with deepening love. He had no idea anyone could possibly feel as though their souls were finally one. You look exactly like him. Her voice was soft. Those eyes. I remember those eyes. Like who? He was confused. Simon. Your grandfather pointed to a spot on the outside of the fence with a patch of flowers. That is where he died. She looked at him. But you know that, Simon. I don't. I'm sorry. You just don't remember. She put her hand on his knee. He was running alongside the fence, laughing with Riley on the other side, suddenly stopping at the patch of flowers. You made the flowers grow where I died, didn't you? She nodded. So wait, my grandfather. She gave him a nod. Yes, that's why I don't remember. She held up her journal. I made you forget. I knew you needed to stay away, but I knew you would return one day. But it seems doing that has made you too. You are you and you are him now, she wrote in her journal. You will remember now. He ran past the workers to get to her. Someone was ahead of him as they arrived together by her side. Her body was mangled, blood covered her small body and bones tore through her flesh. Fragments broken off on the ground around her. Her eyes, those haunting beautiful sad eyes were blank as she exhaled her last breath. He knelt beside her, gently touching the side of her face. Riley, I will be forever yours. We will be together some day. I love you. Do you remember? I do. He leaned in to kiss her. Dude, what the hell? Wade came up the rails while Jesse held Luke on the stairs. They had beaten him up bloody. You think you can prank us or something because your girl don't like? No ghost. He grabbed Simon by the collar of his hoodie. I don't like anyone trying to make me look an ass. Wade shook him, unbalancing them both as Wade slipped and Simon fell off the edge. Riley grabbed his wrist but couldn't lift him. She was still a spectre, which did not give her the strength she needed. No Simon. She held him. John was busy with freeing Luke from Jesse. The sage was trying to push her journal over to her, but it fell through the rails to the ground below. I promise you won't die. I will save you. I believe you, Riley. He felt, though, her hand and his f friend raced over to help her, but it was too late. Simon slammed into the ground. Riley let out a banshee-like scream, turning Wade and transforming the horrific sight of how she looked when she died. Wade sold himself in terror as she threw herself at him, sending both of them over the edge. They plummeted down and he landed impaled on a pipe protruding from the ground and Riley vanished, reappearing at Simon's side. He was barely alive. I'm sorry. He mustered out with all his strength he had. Shh, my love. You won't die. She stroked his cheek, then whispered. All she had left was her soul, and with this she gave to him so that he would live their love story. A tragedy. She brought her lips close to his. I love you, Simon, forever yours. She kissed him, their first kiss, and they parted lips, and the colour 
drained from her as a vapour left her mouth into his. She was devoid of life. As she backed away and sat up, he looked to Riley as she faded away. No, he cried out as Luke, John and the sage appeared. Simon stood up, seething. Where is the other one? Where is Jesse? The sage pointed to Jesse, running off out of the gates. I don't think so. Simon first clenched at his sides. So tightly blood started to fall from them, and his eyes darkened, creating a mask of blackness. He slightly lowered his head with a grind of his teeth. A heavy smoke rose from behind him. No, from him manifesting into Riley, only the grain death wraith of her, a spirit of vengeance, a omen of death. The ghastly form vanished, only to appear in front of Jesse with terrifying wail. Paralyzed with fear, Jesse stopped dead in his tracks as she lunged at him, ripping him apart like some savage, savage animal would. When she was done, the wrath returned to Simon, not before looking at Luke, who felt the fear Jesse had. Riley, Simon called to her solemnly. She went to him, turning into smoke once again and becoming one with Simon. John put out his hand, holding her journal, as Simon's featured return, return to normal. It's yours now. Simon took the book. Thank you. He opened a wrote. A moment later, Luke was healed from his beating. The both of them walked out to the amusement park. Simon wrote in the book once more, and they walked away. The park exploded into flames behind them as an evil smile crossed his face. We are together, my love. Riley's voice spoke to him in his head. And now they all must pay so that we can live. Indeed they must, indeed. His grin grew wider as the sounds of the sirens became louder.